Before we simplify expressions like these, let us review the laws of exponents. If we have x to the power a multiplied by x to the power b, where x is some genetic base and a as well as b are exponents, how would we simplify that? We keep the same base and we add the exponents so it would be x to the power a plus b. What if we have the quantity x to the power a to the power b instead? We keep the base and multiply the exponents so it would be x to the power a times b. Next one. Negative exponents do not mean negative numbers. A negative exponent basically means reciprocal. So, if we have x to the power negative a, this means we would have to take the reciprocal of x to the power a. So, we would have 1 all over x to the power a. If we have a fraction to a power, say the quantity x over y to the power a, where x and y are generic base, y not equal to 0, and a is an exponent, then we would take the numerator and the denominator to that power. Let us keep these in mind and go over our example. The first thing we want to do is to look at the expression and see what are our options for how we could start. Which of the laws of exponents should we use? It looks like we could use power of a quotient law. That means we would have this expression. Now, which of the laws of exponents should we use to simplify the numerator and denominator? We could use power of a power law. We would have this expression. Simplifying further, we would get this expression. Finally, which of the laws of exponents should we use to rewrite the denominator? We could use negative exponents, even if this example looks a bit different because the negative exponent is already in the denominator. We would end up with x times y to the second power. Note that y to the power negative 2 is equal to 1 all over y squared. Hence, 1 all over y to the power negative 2 is equal to y squared. In general, if we have 1 all over x to the power negative a, notice that the negative exponent is already in the denominator, so we have to get the reciprocal of that, which would give us x to the power a. We could have simplified the expression in another way. First, we could have applied negative exponent and got this expression. Then, we could have applied power of a product law. That is, if a product is raised to a power, say the quantity x times y to the power a, where x and y are generic base and a is an exponent, then we would take each factor to the power. So, we would have ended up with this expression. Notice that the answer would have been the same, x times y to the second power. Remember, being familiar with the different laws of exponents and knowing when and how to apply each law is essential when simplifying expressions. Now, let us consider another example. How do we simplify this expression? Pause this video and try it on your own. Your solution could be similar to any of the following. Now, 
we shall simplify other expressions using laws of exponents. In example 1, we simplify this expression. Before we do, recall how we simplify x to the power a all over x to the power b. It is quite similar to x to the power a times x to the power b, which is equal to x to the power a plus b. However, since the operation is division, we subtract the exponents. So we would have x to the power a minus b. Now, let us take a look at example 1. Which of the laws of exponents should we use to simplify the numerator? It looks like we could use product law. So, we would have this expression. Before we could add all three fractions, we need to find the least common denominator. In this case, 10. Then, we rewrite each fraction as follows. Then, x to the power 12 over 10, which is also equivalent to x to the power 6 fifths. On the other hand, which of the laws of exponents should we use to simplify the denominator? It seems we could use power of a power law. We would have this expression, or simply x to the power negative 1. So far, we have just simplified the numerator and denominator separately. Now, we could write the expression as x to the power 6 fifths all over x to the negative 1. Which of the laws of exponents should we use to simplify this expression? Note that we could use negative exponents and product law respectively. Our solution would be like this. Alternatively, we could use quotient law and our solution would be similar to this. As long as we are familiar with the laws of exponents and we use each law appropriately, we can simplify expressions in many ways. For example, to simplify this expression, we could have used the power of a power law, followed by the negative exponents, then product law. Our solution would have been like this. Now, try example 2. Simplify this expression. Pause this video now. Compare your solution to the given solution. Are the two solutions the same or different? What laws of exponents did you use to simplify the given expression?